Hey guys, Catherine here. Um, I'm just going to give you guys a quick example of how to explain the difference between no details, boring details, and telling details to your kids in your writing workshops. So before you would start with your kids, you would just explain each of these terms. You would say, no details is when you just have no information. You can't tell anything about what is going on, like he wore clothes or she walked down the hall. We don't know what kind of clothes, we don't know what kind of hall she's walking down. A boring detail is just a regular detail that you would think of, a small piece of information. Uh, so like, he wore a red shirt, or she walked down a big long haul. There's nothing that exciting about these details, but they do give you a little more information than you might have had. So no details is bad writing, boring details is so-so writing, it's a little better. But what we really want our kids to do is write with telling details. And what a telling detail is, is a detail that tells you a whole lot more than just what it says. Right, so a boring detail, he wore a red shirt, just tells you he wore a red shirt. It doesn't tell you anything about his personality, it doesn't tell you anything about where he is or what kind of guy he is. But if you write a telling detail, like he wore a torn Metallica shirt that smelled of sweat and motor oil, <laughs> that tells you a whole lot more than just what it is. It doesn't just tell you that he wore a Metallica shirt. It tells you that he probably likes heavy metal music, right? It tells you that he wears torn shorts, torn shirts, so maybe he doesn't have a ton of money, or maybe he likes the grunge style. If he smells of sweat and motor oil, it doesn't just tell you what it smells like. It tells you that he probably works on a motorcycle or a car, or that he maybe works in a garage, right? So this is a telling detail because it tells you so much more than just what it says. And this is the kind of writing we want our kids to do. So when you're explaining it to your kids, you start off by giving these terms, and then by giving an example like this, where you start with something that's boring, you get it a little better but still pretty boring, and then you make it interesting and telling. After you do it yourself once, you would have your kids help you with an example. So you would say, okay, she walked down the hall. Now that has no details. We don't know anything about the hall. We don't know anything about who she is. Then you would show them a boring detail and say, okay, maybe she walked down the big long hall. What does that tell us? And you would ask them that, and they wouldn't be able to give you a lot of very interesting answers. They might say, well, the hall's big, the hall's long, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't tell us much more. And then you would tell them to brainstorm for 30 seconds about a telling detail that would tell you either about this woman or the hall. So they might say, uh, she walked down a dark hall that smelled like chlorine, right? Uh, which tells you a whole lot more. It tells you maybe you're near a pool, or maybe it's a very clean place, and it's dark, maybe she's not supposed to be there, right? So you would brainstorm with them, and odds are they're going to give you some wrong answers, right? They might say, she walked down a white hall, which is a detail but not a great detail. So you would catch it, and you would say, great, I'm glad you said that. Let's take a second and see if we can make that even more telling. What else can we add that would tell us more about this hall or this place? So you'll do it once um, as a big group, and then you can ask them to do it once on their own. So maybe say, okay, if I were to ask you to describe yourself, what's a boring detail you might say? And they might say, oh, I'm nice or I'm funny or uh, I wear red shoes, right? Uh, and then you would ask them to write down a telling detail about themselves, and that gives you one more chance to make sure that they really understand. You can correct them, you can help them improve their details. Um, this is a tough skill, but if you explain it like this and walk them through it, it will really, really improve their writing. So, good luck!